catches my eye. What about her husband? He was scared to death. I feel his wife would talk. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry there's no breakfast prepared, but you see, my wife's all right, Rogers. Of course, Rogers, we understand. But uh, I thought you told us he was dead. His wife. Eh? His, His wife. wife. Wife? No, no, no. I don't think a man would ever kill his wife, no matter how guilty she was. The wicked flee when no man pursue Two accidental deaths in 12 hours. I don't believe it. All right. What do you say, Judge? How does the rhyme go, Miss Clayton? Uh, ten little Indians. One chopped his little self, and then there were nine. Uh -huh. Go on. One overslept himself, and then there were eight. We are eight people on this island now. Come by. I'll be ready in a minute. Take your time. You know, I got it. Got what? There's one thing this fellow Owen forgot. As long as it's a bare rock. We'll catch that raving maniac. We've been acting like fools if we have on the island. You mean Rogers was lying? Why not? The man's scared, scared out of his senses. It's obvious. That's why I think he's telling the truth. A lunatic like Owen could have found a hiding place before Rogers arrived here. It doesn't matter if Rogers is lying or not. You agree that Mr. Owen and Squad is hiding, don't you? It'll certainly be dangerous. We ought to be armed. Yes, yeah, too bad we're not allowed to carry firearms in England. It puts the normal citizen at a great disadvantage. You mean you haven't any weapon? You know, Blore, it's strange, but I came to the same conclusion you did. That Mr. Owen is hiding. Maybe inside this house. He'd have to have an accomplice with me. If you honest me, Roger, this isn't the only queer one in this house. I have a feeling I'm being watched. Secretly. What do you see? <coughs> I, I thought I heard a strange voice. Um, gentlemen, I have come to the conclusion that the invisible Mr. Owen is hiding somewhere on this island. Extraordinary. I was looking for you to tell you the same thing. That's what I think, sir. Me too. We've all come to the same opinion. We must find this place of concealment. Immediately. So long as there is a loon ticket large, we are in mortal danger. Hello, Puss. Looking for a mouse? So are we. What I'd like to know is whether we're the cat or the mouse. Nobody in the general's room, not even the general. What about the old boy? I don't know. I don't think he even knows where he is himself. Nothing in there but the Russian. I keep hearing that song he was singing last night, just before he popped off. Tender Indians. Yeah. It certainly was his swan song. One thing is certain, he isn't inside, therefore he must be outside. Brilliant thinking, Blore. Huh?
I'm afraid it's no use watching for the boat. Won't come till Monday. No boat will ever come, Julian. We're here forever. What made you love him, Juliet? For John. Oh. Forgive me, my child. You don't understand. Nobody, not a living thing, not even a hiding place. Not even a seagull could hide down there. I don't understand it. Maybe we've been wrong, built up a nightmare out of imagination. Two people dead isn't imagination. The Russian may have committed suicide. And Mrs. Rogers? Well, you didn't give her an overdose last night, did you? Doctors can't afford to make mistakes of that kind. We cannot wonder as detectives sometimes do. Wouldn't be your first mistake if that gramophone record is to be believed. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this is no time for quarreling. Let's face it, we're in a trap. You shouldn't forget the ten little Indians on the dinner table. That's right. Mr. Owen's hand is plain to see. Yes, but where the devil is Mr. Owen himself? Oh, it is on this island. He'll catch his death of cold. That's supposed to be a joke. I don't see the point. All we have to do is to keep quiet and we'll hear him sneeze. Oh. I'm sorry. It's only cold meat and salad. I, I did the best I could. Oh, we are Rogers. We're only seven today. I'm sorry. Did you call General Mandrake? Oh, I, I looked in his room, miss, but he's not there. Didn't he come in the house? I didn't see him, Doctor. Not the I saw him, he was mooning around on the beach. He seemed quite abnormal. I know where he is. You stay here, Miss Claythorne. You say the general was behaving very strangely. Like a man out of his mind. In other words, a lunatic. Right, oh, the old boy's balmy. Whom the gods destroy, they first make mad. Well? And we looking for a lunatic? He said no boat will ever come. Then he knows something. Maybe he's not as crazy as we think he is. Doctor, you better come with me. And don't wait for us. And don't wait for the general any longer. Poison glass could mean suicide. An overdose of sedative might have been an accident. But this instrument, which you saw me remove from the back of the third victim, means only one thing. Murder. Or an act of God. My dear lady, in my experience of ill-doing, Providence leaves the work of punishment to us mortals. Evidently, Mr. Owen believes we're guilty of certain crimes which the law can attach, and he's appointed himself to execute justice. That is why he has enticed us to this island. There's no one on this island, I tell you, no one. Doctor, Doctor Armstrong. What is it, man? There's another little Indian figure missing. That accounts for the general. I was expecting that. You uh, just said there's no one on this island. In the sense you mean no. Nevertheless, I'm now certain that Mr. Owen is here. How can he be here? I don't believe in the invisible man. He's not invisible. Mr. Owen could only come to this island in one way. It's perfectly clear. Mr. Owen is one of us.
to do that. I'm just studying Mr. Owen's little scheme. Maybe you know how the general was killed. My dear Bloor, can't you read? Eight little Indian boys traveling in Devon. One said he'd stay there, and then there were seven. The old soldier stayed here, didn't he? Am I disturbing your little game? Not at all, Bloor. Nothing clears the mind like a game of precision. What game are you playing, Judge? We've come to the conclusion that Doctor and I, that this whole story is a game of the mind. There we are. Eight of us came to this island. The Rogers were waiting for us. Don't forget, waiting for us. One of the ten is Mr. Owen. Well, we agree on that. Out of all of us, three persons are definitely cleared. Who? Oh. The dead ones. Our Russian friend, Mrs. Rogers, and the general. Seven little Indians left. Six. One is bogus. Correct, sir. One of us is Mr. Owen. Which one? Where's your alibi? I'm not like you, Mr. Blower. I'm a well-known professional man. My dear doctor, that proves less than nothing. I, too, am a well-known person. But doctors have gone mad before now. Judges have gone mad. So have policemen. And uh, may I say, explorers, Mr. Lombard. You may, you may. Why do you leave Miss Claythorne out of it? We don't. No, you, my dear lady. I quite appreciate that nobody can be exonerated without proof. What about Rogers? That's what I'm thinking. What do we know about him? He put that record on the gramophone, didn't he? That's a fact. How do we know Rogers didn't lease his house and pretend to be the butler? Bad psychology. You can rule Rogers out definitely. Oh, I don't see why. Look at the shape of his head. He hasn't the brains for it. And don't forget there's something else, sir. My wife was one of the victims. In my time, Rogers, I've had several husbands before me guilty of the murder of the wives. Oh, well, if you put it that way, sir, they, they do sometimes drive a man crazy. We must suspect each and every one among us. No, I warn everybody to be on his guard. If not, We shall all go the same way. And Mr. Owen will very soon be alone on this island. E flat, Miss Claythorne. Aren't you afraid the others will think you're playing inappropriate? Can't stand the silence. I have to do something. Go on playing. If it's any comfort to you, there's one person who doesn't suspect you. Thank you. Aren't you going to return the compliment? I haven't made up my mind about you, Mr. Lombard. Whom do you suspect? I think you're wrong. Well, who then? A man who believes in punishing crimes. His brain might snap and he'd want to be executioner after having been a judge. Rogers, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Did you <laughs> prepare a nice dinner? Oh, uh, just cold meat, sir. Ah, I see. Now, I'm sure you do your best, Rogers. Uh, did uh, 
plenty of food for the weekend? Oh, yes, sir. Everything was provided for. Oh, oh Mr. Blore, may I uh, ask you a question? Of course, of course, my dear fellow. How many will you be for dinner tonight? But... Oh, I, I see what you mean. <laughs> Don't forget your vote, Rogers. In a case like this, a secret vote is the only way to bring out into the open what we're all thinking. No, 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 no. Never touch it, no. But, uh, under the circumstances. <sighs> now, who do we suspect of being Mr. Owen? Mr. Lombard, one vote. Mr. Blore, one vote. Ha, <laughs> ha. Dr. Armstrong, one vote. Rogers, one vote. Miss Brent, one vote. Ah, I see, I haven't been neglected. One vote. Another vote for you, Rogers. You win. You mean, sir, that I am being accused? Well, it's not precisely a majority, but you have the most votes. They're saying it's me because I'm only a butler. You said I didn't have the brains to do it. I didn't vote for you, Rogers. Well, who did then? But who didn't drink the cocktails you just served? You think I'd poison those cocktails? I'll show you, sir. Picking on an innocent man. Uh, I can't touch even a drop of alcohol. Oh, right. no, no, no. I don't want to no, wait out here. And if that's what you think of me, I'm not going to serve any dinner. Oh, why? 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 Don't look so offended, Rogers. If it had been anybody but you, sir. I'm sorry, Rogers, but how do I know you didn't vote for me? I didn't, Your Honor. I voted for... Well, time will tell. Well, after all, Rogers, nobody in this house is above suspicion. Never in my life have I been accused of any crime, sir. What about that gramophone record? What about it? That woman you worked for, she left you some money, didn't she? Let's not stand on her dignity, Rogers. After all, she was sick. Didn't you, um, shorten her suffering in this world? With the complicity, of course, of poor Mrs. Rogers. I'm not going to argue with you, sir. But what makes you think I would kill anybody who wasn't going to leave me any money? <laughs> no, thank you. Pardon me. Obviously, we can't sit up all night like this. I'm going to retire. Good night. If you don't mind, I'll say good night, too. If you don't mind, Miss Claythorne, I'd rather go upstairs alone. May I remind you, Miss Brent, that I'm the only one whose name wasn't mentioned in the voting? That's what I mean. I find that fact most peculiar. I know Miss Brent won't mind if there's a third person. Not so fast, Mr. Lombard. I'll go with you. The more the merrier. And the safer. Warm 
in here, isn't it? Yeah, quite warm, quite warm. And uh, lonely. Yeah, quite lonely, quite, quite lonely. Rogers! Yes, sir. Oh, would you mind keeping us company for a while? <laughs> Anything you wish, sir. <coughs> Don't put any water in. I shan't, sir. <laughs> Good night, Miss Claythorne. Don't forget to lock your door. You cannot lock out the devil. I think there's another one who's bar me. Huh? So it'll end with the old lot going that way. I don't fancy you will, Blore. No. Take a lot to send me off my head. I don't think you'll be going that way either. I feel quite sane at the moment. Thank you. Have you told him? Yes, sir. I know the jury's decision. You'd feel safer if I didn't stay inside the house tonight. Well, then, I shall sleep in the woodshed. And now, if you'll excuse me, good night. I'll lock it behind him. That's not enough, Mr. Blow. Still seven. Lock that door, please. Put the key there. We'll have no more Indian tricks tonight. Lock it, Mr. Blow. No way. Now no one can get in there but you. Oh, I see. Well, but, but, but who's going to keep it? Roger. Open up, Roger. Keep away from that door. It's me, Lombard. Open up. Do you take me for a fool, Mr. Lombard? Don't be silly, Roger. Don't be silly yourself, sir. This is Judge Quintanon. You know my voice, Rogers. Dr. Armstrong. This is Blow, Rogers. Open the door. At a time like this, I wouldn't open the door, even if it was Santa Claus. We just want to give you a key. What for? Never mind, you idiot. Hurry up, it's raining. Shove it under the door, sir. Good night, Roger. Keep your door locked. <laughs> Don't worry about me, sir. You know, the common cold kills more people than... Never mind. I need hardly advise you to lock your doors. I've put a chair under the handle. There are ways of turning locks from the outside. And if it should turn out that one of you is Mr. Owen, just remember, I'm a very light sleeper. Good night. Good night, gentlemen. May we all meet safely in the morning. Good night. Good night, sir. Not here. You grasp a fact very quickly, Blore. 